What up, though? You already know how it goes. Smash, like, subscribe, comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. You did. Hey, let's jump straight into this real, real quick because I want to get to uploading. Tap OG, 74 G. I want to get to uh, uploading his videos because y'all going to really love them. It was a good interview, and we got plenty more to come. It's a lot of stuff that we didn't talk about. I was there. The stuff he was talking about, I was there to see it with my own eyes. Like, that's the most gangster Chaldean I know. But let's get right into this real quick. Real, real quick. Once a month or twice a month, I'm going to do a video of why you shouldn't go to prison. I'm just keep reiterating the same thing to you over and over. When you hear these stories, for the young men that's out there, you know, participating in crime, doing, you know, got anger problems or whatever the case may be, anything that make them high risk and going to prison, I'm talking to y'all, right? Don't just be intrigued by the stories, but listen, listen to the message. Listen to why you don't want to go to these type of environments to live. You know what I'm saying? Listen to them. Think, is this a life that I want to live? Because I know a lot of us growing up, we wanted to go to prison. Am I right or wrong? Drop it down there. I'm, just in case somebody think I'm crazy. Us growing up in the hood, being influenced by the hip-hop culture, being influenced by um, <clears throat> the drug dealers, the gang bangers, the music, just talking about blood, suwu, crip. You know, I remember one time, I. I think I wanted to be a crip at one point in time, or a blood. I think it was a blood. I wanted, yeah, I want. I definitely wanted to be a blood. But it started off with the crips because I felt like Snoop Dogg was just cool and he was gangster and all that. But one thing I started to realize when I got older is us growing up as adolescents, we got a hard time depicting reality from fiction. You know, I think it was Rod Wave that said it about Rick Ross. No, he said it about Jeezy. Jeezy told us to sell drugs. He, he was he rapped. He said Jeezy told us to sell drugs, but told us kids to go to college jeez you know what i'm saying and that's true like these rappers that's putting this out there in the ethers they're not really living not the big ones they're not living like us i'm not talking about some little uh, some chicago drill rapper not little i want to say little to mean you know uh or be little with somebody doing marginalized but th this is not no drill rapper that only get paid off youtube or you know getting two thousand dollars for a show and he might have one every you know, twice a week, you know, you're making 6000 a month, maybe a 1000 off. I'm talking about the guys that own franchises like Ross and Cheese. Let me close this. Just in case y'all can't hear me. I'm sorry about that. Hey, look, I don't even be adding all this out. Stop it. I just, I just do my thing for, you know, for them people who do all that. Anyway, those people who own all these franchises, these businesses, get millions off their records, their kids don't go to school with ours. Their kids don't go to school with ours. They not telling their kids, you know, go hustle, go get a bag. They not. It's entertainment. So, I mean, it's not their responsibility to help your kid depict reality from fiction. It's not their job. It's their job to make money. And however that is, it is what it is. People can think what they want to think about it, but it is what it is. You did what I'm talking about? So, when you pick up that bag, you know that you're going, when you pick up the bag, you pick up the gun or whatever you do, you're going to the graveyard, you're going to be in that wheelchair, you're going to prison, or you're probably going to be on the stuff that you're selling or just nobody with no means to strive towards nothing bigger than what you are now. That's the places you head. Very, very small percentage make it out. And I know for a fact, like, selling drugs is addictive. It's addictive. Fast money is addictive. And, it, and easy come, easy go, because I done lost so much that fast. You know what I'm saying? It took me two, three months to get it. I lost it in a month and a half. Court cases, restitution, paying people not to come to court, paying people to move. So on and so forth. Be oh, let's bail him out because he might tell on something that he not. It's just chaotic. And then when you're spending it, you get caught up in that. You get caught up in that 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 addiction to this small little hood fame, this small this small little down river fame, whatever it was. Like I go in, in the after hours, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday if it's open early. You know what I'm saying? And I go in there, a bottle of rosé in the store. $60, mid-sized bottle of rosé, $60. In the club, 
that's 120 and the after hours is 200 dollars for a bottle you know what give me two because i want the sparkles to come to me so everybody can see like dog winning while the same dude over there buying a couple shots for 10 15 dollars might spend a hundred dollars all together on him and grill and some balloons and he leaving with the same type of chick i am i just they just want to all the gold diggers just want to be on me and i'm getting the chicks to just you know trying to get a little something out of me and get on or maybe they you know, it, it was crazy but you addicted to that fame you addicted to it oh a bottle of hennessy what a fifth of hennessy cost and stuff 45 hours in the, in the after hours it's 180 dollars but i'm buying them because i want the sparkles to come to me i want all the attention that shit, it easy come easy go i'm telling you you you, you develop a mindset where it's like all right, i'll get it back tomorrow i'll go below two thousand or a thousand, two, three nights a week. I'll get it back in a couple of days. I'll get it back in a couple of days. But it's going to be that day that you don't get it back. And then you're going to take a loss after that. Then you're going to take a loss and it all go away. You feel me? But one thing about it is when you know how to get it one way, you can get it another way. You could, The same rules in business, legit business, is the same rules in selling drugs. Just apply it over here. It's going to last a lot longer. It's going to feel a whole lot better. This way, you know, can you go tell your mom you're selling drugs? I mean, I, I can't. She's going to be like, what? I, can I go tell my aunt, my grandmother I'm selling drugs? You can't do it. Don't feel right. If you won't want to give this life to your children, it really ain't about nothing. So for y'all to gang bang, think about this. Would you want your child to gang bang? And some of y'all so ignorant, y'all be like, yeah, you know, well, if the gang is right. Stop. Please, stop. Um... Let me get into why you shouldn't go to prison again. I want to, I'm going to reiterate the same stuff over and over to you, right? Who wants to be around men who rape other men, women, children? Who want to be around a man that can't wait till a, a little white guy from the suburbs come here so he can punk him out his manhood? Who want to be around people like that? What's the positives in that? Just tell me. Who want to sleep around a man who killed one of his bunkies for eating bags of chips at night and didn't even give him a warning like that it, he should have just knew? Who want to be around men who want to stab their bunkie because they opened the window? I told all these stories. Go look at them. Because he opened the window, you want to stab him and didn't even warn it. Didn't even want to want, want, want a guy. A man who think that that think that that's logical. That, that that's damn. That's scary. Going to going to sleep at night around a guy that been down forty years and you don't know how prison affected his mentality. Guys who see stuff. Guys who have skip. Uh, what is it called? Schizophrenic episodes. Like once a day, I've been around a young guy like that. It, it messed me up. He was nineteen. He'd be cool, joking all throughout the morning, around five, six o'clock after dinner. He yelling crazy, talking to himself, rapping loud. Y'all, go talking. Just imagine if we wasn't in one man's cells, and that was my my bunkie. This was in level five. Just imagine him being in a level two with a guy, and he get to rocking all night on top of his bed, banging songs out in his head. Who want to be around people who when nurses walk past, they pull out their penis and, and masturbate? Who want to be around people like that? Tell me what, what, what's good about that? Who want to be around people who will fight you or stab you over two noodles? This is worth 34 cents a piece. 68 cents could possibly take your life. You want to be around people like that? Who want to be around a bunch of unruly men, loud all night, looking for any reason to fight? Any reason to fight, any reason to prove a point. The dude called me the N-word, I stabbed him. He know not to call a Muslim that. Man, these young guys coming here, they don't know prison rules. They ignorant. And you want to punish them just because they young and got an outdate. Who want to be around men that you might get cool with, but he find out you about to get out? And he put a knife under your bed so you can go to the hole, come back out, get flopped, and be with him a few more years or a few months. 
who want to be in an environment when somebody come give you something and say, hey, here, just pay me back when you can. Or, hey, here, have this. I know you're down and out right now. Or, I know you knew. And you don't know what he want back from it. Or he expects something back after he said you can have it. You took it, so that meant that you wanted him. You want to be around people like that. It's kind of weird to me. You want to be around guys who put Kool-Aid on their face, arch their eyebrows real thick, I mean real thin, and the moment you say they gay or homosexual, they'll get mad and want to fight you. But you you wearing Daisy Dukes around here with Kool-Aid on you. But the moment you say they gay, it, it make them feel some type of way. This is true, like, dog, you doing things, you dressing like a woman now, you with other dudes, just, you know, get, and somebody say, hey, you know, you gay, or let me ask you a question about the uh, homosexual community. And he freak out, because he don't want to face who he really is, but he living. Did, did that even make sense what I just said? That's kind of even hard to believe and fathom, ain't it? You want to be around people like that? You want to be around people that clean their room 30 times a day and you can't get no sleep? Or you trying to go to sleep and they just yelling all night, making animal calls? You want to be on a yard where they say, okay, if you don't belong to something, we're going to approach you and you're going to get down with us or you got to get off the yard. You know what I mean? People get, get down with the gang just because they don't want to. Or they got to go live in a hole and hide out because they refuse to. Or they get sliced. A couple guys get sliced on the yard. Hey, you know them guys got sliced on the yard because they wouldn't join the bloods, right? And then everybody, hey, yeah, I'll be a blood. I'll be a blood. Yeah, I'll be. Now you forced to live. You want to live around a dude that killed his mama, killed his children, killed his pastor. Don't make too much sense to me, man. It don't. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Sometimes it's hard not to participate in crime. I know it's hard. But if you if you if if you can hold it together for just two years going to college or nine months in a trade or hold hold on two jobs and then invest or whatever you gotta do. The real gangsters are the ones at home with their children. The real gangsters are the ones telling other people that don't live that type of life. That's Those are the real gangsters just taking care of their kids, going to work, doing them, not trying to, you know, be hard and do things just to impress somebody else. The gangsters is comfortable with themselves. They accept reality for what it for what it is, not what it's supposed to be. The gangsters are free. Ain't no ifs, ands, buts about that. The gangsters, the real gangsters out here. The real, real gangsters. The, the, the gangsters is doing great. The gangsters is doing good. The gangsters I want to be like is out here. Free world. I want to be Al Prophet. I, I want to be uh, Gillian Wallow. Them real gangsters. Nori. Real gangsters. Out here taking care of their families. Running the checkup. Getting the bag. Uh, all type of different ways. Monetization. Uh, doing a Roman swipe endorsements, Amsterdam. By the way, that new Amsterdam vodka boy ain't nothing that I, I would personally want to go buy. But if you got it, mix that thing with some orange juice. <laughs> that thing fire, for real. <laughs> that thing fire. But uh, stay out, party, get the women. You drink, you smoke, whatever you do, do that. I don't, man, I ain't judging you. Have fun. Go to, go to sorority parties and fraternity parties, frat parties. Go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Go down to the Lions game. Enjoy yourself. Go eat behind my breeze. Because you, when you be in that cell, and especially if you would sit at a cell by a bar or a gas station, you see them chicks hopping out with them Daisy Dukes on. You see them girls flashing you. Or you be downtown at the county jail. I mean, yeah, at the county jail. You looking outside. Dudes all down there on 28s, 30s. Chicks all in the car, bottles of rose all out the window. Going to Ford, you feel me? Punching in, punched in at Ford, made his money, saved it up, and ball. There's plenty of guys to work where I work at, Ryan. Rims are off the job. 
Just stacking up, stacking up. Getting the room made of two, busting the bills now. There's so many ways to win out here, bro. It is crazy. I got to get them, I got to get in all that. You feel me? I want a piece of the action. I'm tired of being on the sideline. I got little things I got to hurdle right now. I'm going to fill y'all in on that real soon. But I want, I want the action. I want that free action. I don't want to be fighting and shooting people outside the club. I don't want to be in prison, you know, with the homies on the yard all tough, working out all day with a bunch of men, hard necks and hard legs. The, uh, somebody heady is working, but I think she's fine because I've been locked up so long and I just want to see a woman. You know what I'm saying? In prison, oh, if a woman worked the unit, we'd just be happy. We'd be so happy. And we wouldn't look at this woman in the world twice. Stay free. That's gangster. Stay gangster. And free. Say, I ain't saying be no punk. Don't let nobody touch you. Don't let nobody take nothing from you. But don't be out there touching people and taking stuff from them. You do what I'm talking about. Because, boy, you running with them homies, you think you're homies. As soon as you go to jail, let me get your baby mama house. Your kid might be calling him daddy for a while. Steal your hustle. They ain't gonna write you. Seen no money. It's gonna be your mama, maybe one of your ex girlfriends, you know, maybe uh, your pastor. And they gonna be the homies on the block, right? <laughs> they might pick up the phone every now and then. Hey, this is my homie. Or shout you out on Facebook a few times, but they ain't put a dollar in your account. I don't yell free nobody that I ain't send no money to. Peace and blessings be upon y'all, man. Big, big, big old five.